Now, what is a random variable? Random variable refers to a numerical value determined by the outcome of an experiment. What is an experiment? An experiment is what you call an event with several outcomes. So when you conduct something, like a, any a project, for example, or any activity where it results to various outcome, you call that experiment. Example, consider a random experiment in which a coin is tossed three times. So let X be the number of heads. Ito yung concern mo, your, your interest. You're watching how many heads it will appear as you toss the coin three times successively. So we have a sample space for the first tossing of a coin. You may get a tail or a head, depends. No? Second, maybe a tail or head. And then the third tossing of a coin may also be a tail or a head. So there are two outcomes for this. Such that overall, after three tosses of a coin, you may have this combination, tail, 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 head, tail, head, tail, and so on. How many sample space? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight outcomes in the sample space. Thus, the possible values of x, which is referring to the random variable that you have, um, x may be equal to zero, meaning there's no head, one possible out outcome. There may be one, uh, only one head. There may be two uh, head after tossing three coins. There may be three. Hindi pwedeng maging four kasi hanggang three tosses lang kayo uh, yung gagawin mo eh. So, the outcome of zero heads, of course, how many? One, uh, one, only one, because the other combinations ha has a head. The outcome of one head occurred three times. So one, two, three, three times. The outcome of two heads, such as this one, one, two, three, occurred al also three times. So from the definition of random variable, X could assume any of these outcomes, all right? So if you're going to construct a probability distribution table, so it would look like this. First column would be the number of heads. You may have zero head. So there's only one occurrence for that. So one out of eight, which means that you have a 12.5% chance of getting that kind of outcome. Then you have one, uh, a number of head occurring only uh, occurring once then you have three three possible uh, outcomes out of eight so you have three uh, point three seven five or you may have thirty seven point five likelihood of getting uh, one head out of three tosses of a coin and so on if you're going to to, to get the sum of this then you have a total of one because that's one characteristic of a probability the sum is equal to one so for the next slide we have this characteristic of a probability distribution in which the sum of all mutually exclusive outcomes is always one the probability of an outcome must always be between zero and one as you can see between zero and one. This is between the range of zero and one. This is also between zero and one and so on. So walang sobra dyan ng one. There's no probability one point something or even more than one. It's, ha it's the total uh, sum of all probabilities just equal to one. That's one characteristic. So how do we define now discrete random variable? Because we have actually two types of random variable. We have discrete and continuous. So from our definition last time, in module one, I think, we discrete random or discrete variable refers to those variable resulting from a count, while continuous, it results from a measurement. So when you say discrete random variable, these are random variables that may assume 
values that are uh, there is it's like an integer so it's it's a count from some item of interest for example let x be the number of times a, B, a bachelor of science uh, student graduate student taking the cpa examination say for example it has four parts or although i know um it has six i don't know let's just say we have four parts the random variable x which is the number of parts of the cpa examination passed by a given student where it may assume the finite number of zero meaning you don't pass any of the four it may have you may only pass one part among the four or two parts or three or even pass all so four over four parts so this is how you associate discrete random variable in a in an event the outcomes may be that you didn't pass or so maybe it could be that you just pass one part out of the four. Okay, so that's how uh, you're going to associate it. Or in other examples, maybe like um, con you, you contact five customers for the day so that the random variable that you are interested in is the number of customers who place an order. So since you contact five customers, possible values of X may be that out of this five, there may be zero who play who place uh, or an order. No, no one. There may be only one customer who plays an order. Up to five. That's that's one kind of an event. Another, inspect a shipment of one hundred electronic gadgets. So from this one hundred, your concern is. The number of defectives so possible values from zero defective no defect at all to all are defective it could be another experiment is the garage sale for one day such that your point of interest is the number of buyers that may uh, come in or walk in so it could range from zero uh boundless right you don't know so it could also be like that. Another experiment is to sell an insurance product such that you're interested on the gender of the customer. So possible values of this gender variable is one, you may assign one for the male, two for the female, or you may assign 10 for the male. This is arbitrary. Two for the fee, uh, 20, for example, for the female, whatever number you may assign. The, the, the important thing is you it's ex mutually exclusive, no? Mutually exclusive yung, yung pag-assign dito sa variable na to. Or finally, take a CPA exam and then the outcome may be zero if you fail and one if you pass. So this is, these are just among the experiments under discrete random variable. You should be able to recognize it when it is discrete and when it is um continuous so applications you may also reflect on the survey that you conducted in module two and from the seven questions that you constructed identify the random variable for each question and list the possible outcomes just so you get the feel of um, how to apply this concept is this random variable discrete or continuous oh diba? And how about continuous random variable? Continuous random variable is a variable that can assume one of the infinitely large number of values, right? When you say infinite, it could it, it may not be, you may not be able to count it. So one among, uh, among the experiment under continuous random variable is the time it takes for five customers to close a deal. So you're interested in the time in minutes. You may say 1.5 minute. So there's a a there's a, a a value in between one and two. So if you assign, say for example, I'm only interested up to 30 minutes. That's because historical my historical data tells me that I could close a deal before 30 minute 30 minutes. 
So x could vary from 0 to 30. Those are possible values of x. Or say, for example, kilos per piece of chicken of a sample of 100 chickens, 100 dressed chickens. Number of kilos, that's what you're interested in because you, you are maybe the one in charge in the quality control. Like sa mga lichon manok, di ba? Yung mga nag, uh, like, ang docks ba yun? Such that ang um, lichon manok nila dapat hindi lumalagpas ng 1 kilo, for example. So gusto nilang i-filter yun. So you have 0 to 2. Or maybe you can change this to 1 if you want. No? So it's up to you kung ano yung possible values of x. So maybe you can also disregard if ever lumagpas na ng 1, o oh, hindi na, lugi na to. So iba na lang to. Para sa iba na to. Parang ganon, no? Construction of condominium towers. Percentage of project completed in 6 months. So maybe it could also be expressed in percentage, not only numbers. So you could say from 0 to 100. Siyempre, wala namang 101. Yeah, maybe the outcome could be, or possible values of X could be, let's say, 85.6% completed in six months. Temperature of freshly served coffee at Starbucks. Pwede rin temperature in Celsius degree, that's what you're interested in. So from 50 to 80 Celsius degree, yun yung gusto mong possible out values for X, and then you test, you make a trial, let's say, how many in a sample of isang araw, titingnan mo ngayon, ilan ba talagang, ano ba talagang temperature na isiserve sa, let's say, a sample of 100 customers? Anong temperature ng coffee? So, yan ang ngayon ang pwede mong gawin in a continuous random variable. Okay? So, the mean of a discrete probability distribution reports the central location of the data. It is the long-run average value of random variable. So may mean din tayo. It also referred to as it's expected or E of X in a probability distribution. It is a weighted average. It is computed by this formula where the, mean, the mu refers to the mean. And it can also be referred as E of X, no? event of X, which is equal to the summation of the X. What is the X? is the random variable multiplied by the probability of that random variable to happen. Okay? So take note of this. And with respect to the uh, tossing of a coin three times, we have this probability outcomes. No? Um, and then after computing for this with reference to the total, you compute for the mean. What is the value of the mean? Zero times 0.125 plus 1 times 0.375 plus 2 times 0.375 plus 3 times 0.125. So after computing all this, you come up with 1.5 as the mean. Right? That's, that is the, the, the way to compute for the mean of a discrete probability distribution. First, you have to really construct this table so it would be easy for you. The variance measures the amount of spread, variation of a distribution. How do we compute for the variance? This is now the formula for the variance, which is familiar, of, which is familiar to you, like x minus mean, quantity squared, multiplied by the probability of that outcome to happen, right? So parang familiar to, it's like the variance before in a group data, except that you now is multiplying it with P of X. And the standard deviation is the square root of this variance, right? Square root. So going back to the table, computing for the variance, you have zero minus the mean that we computed a while ago, quantity squared. So there is no negative sign for this because it is... It will be squared. It will always be positive. And then multiplied by 0.125, the P of X, the corresponding P of X. Again, 1 minus 1.5 squared and then multiplied with this and so on. So after computing, you come up with 0.75, 
which is the standard deviation, uh, no, the variance. And the square root of this is now the standard, uh, standard deviation. So that is how to determine discrete probability distribution in terms of the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation. So let's have an example on this, no? aside from the tossing of a coin. Let us say you have a data like this one. Over the past 300 days of operation in a certain uh, um, car dealing, car dealer, sales data shows uh, 54 days with no automobiles sold. 117 days with one sold, 72 days with two sold, 42 days with three, 12 days with four, three days with five. So here's the probability distribution for the number of automobiles sold during a day at Toyota Motors. Find the variance and standard deviation. So you lay out the probable uh, outcome. So zero, there could be zero sold, uh, one sold, and so on up to the P5 value. This is, by the way, P of X. So P of X is... 0.18 for a zero. Paano nakuha? It's just 54 divided by 300. So you have 0.18. 117 divided by 300, you got uh, 0.39 and so on. You do that. Notice the total, it's always 1.0. And then you multiply this. Why are you multiplying it? Because you want to compute for the mean. Once you get the mean, you compute for the variance. And the square root of the variance is, is the standard deviation. Okay. So that's uh, for the discrete probability distribution. We now go to the next topic. But before we go to the next topic, uh, 